welcome to EPG Partsala. Today we are going to learn a course on groundwater hydrology and that will be part 5 course. In this course we will focus on module 18. The module titles advection, dispersion, diffusion and sorption. Let me briefly introduce you to this module. In this module, we will extensively focus on groundwater quality problems. More specifically, we will deal with reactive transfer problems. And when we say reactive transfer problems, we will deal with a mass that is flowing with water and that is also going transformation as a result of chemical reactions. However, in this module, we will focus on only one type of reaction and that will be the sorption reaction. Towards the end of the module, we will be putting up a reactive transfer problem and trying to solve it and learn to visualize the solution. So, let us start with the object learning objective of the module. In this module, we will start with learning the different types of problems that is flow problems, transfer problems and reactive transfer problems. We learn to distinguish between these type of problems. Then we will learn about different types of transfer processes that will be advection, dispersion, diffusion and also chemical uh, processes such as sorption. Eventually we will learn to set up a problem that is derive a transport model or a reactive transport model in this case and finally towards the end we are going to solve the transfer problem and visualize it. Let us start with the definitions or a basics, very basics of different types of problems in the groundwater. First, of course, is the flow model that we dealt with in module 17 of this course uh, of the groundwater hydrology course 4. These models or the flow models extensively deal with the quantity aspects of groundwater, hydraulic head, storage coefficient. Transmissivity, etc., are the most important quantities of the flow model. Now, the transport model, and here I want to specify something called the conservative transport model. The conservative transport model is one is those model in in which chemical reactions are not taking place. It's only that mass is moving, or mass is spreading out, or mass is changing the mass concentration is changing over the space and over the time. These models deal with, uh, with flowing water, mass flowing along with water and some of the key quantities or processes in these models are advection, dispersion, diffusion, etc. Now let us distinguish between a conservative transport and a reactive transport. A reactive transport model are those models in which chemical concentration changes over the space as a result of chemical reactions. Different types of chemical reactions can take place, for example, acid base reaction, sorption reaction, redox reaction. It is to be noted that the chemical transformation of the mass is not always required. For example, in sorption reaction, mass in water changes phase from solid to liquid resulting to concentration gradient in liquid. In this module, our focus will be more towards understanding reactive uh, transport models. But to begin with, we will still learn different processes that affect the transport model. And to start with, we will use uh, advection. Advection is the flow of mass along with the groundwater. That is, this is uh, the velocity of the water, the speed of water forces the mass to flow. We uh, quantify it mathematically with, with a mass uh, with a mass flow rate called J uh, ADV and that equals to NE AVC. Here AV is area, V is the velocity and which equals to discharge that is Q. So it can also be said that NE AQC. If we are interested in flux then we divide the mass flow rate with the area and thus we have NEPC and that's advection. Advection is the simplest form of transport. 
Next, we deal with the dispersion. Dispersion is actually a spread and not a linear or a flow along with the water. Uh, dispersion results due to uh, several mechanism and it is now accepted that uh, among the three um, fundamental mechanism for dispersion are non-uniform flow in individual pore and that can be seen in the first figure over here where you can see that the flow is maximum in the center and is minimum or the lowest or even there is a zero flow at the surface of the particle. This uh, different in flow causes uh, mass gradient. The next mechanism for dispersion is the size of an individual pore. Different pore uh, has a different sizes and in different sizes the flow varies as thus the spread uh, some mass moves faster whereas other mass lags behind. The third mechanism is the third figure in the screen over here in which the flow is taking different paths uh, that is meandering in uh, if the flow is taking the shortest path to the exit the mass will come uh, the mass comes out earlier whereas if the flow is taking the longest path it will be last to come so this uh, it clearly this person is more complex compared to advection and in mathema uh, mathematically it is uh, defined as you can see as is presented in the screen over here as J dispersion, which is a, ma a dispersive mass flow rate, equals to a constant called dispersivity, which has the dimension of length, AV, that is discharge, that is Q, and the concentration gradient over the space L, delta CL. Here, negative sign refers to the flow from higher concentration towards the lower concentration. If you are interested in flux, then we define, uh, divide the mass flow, dispersive mass flow with the area and thus we get negative alpha Ne V delta C L. Ne is the effective porosity which uh, quantifies the connected pores in the porous medium. Okay, that is all I have to say about dispersion. Next, I will talk about diffusion. Diffusion is entirely a chemical concentration gradient process. To differentiate between differ, uh, dispersion and diffusion, I would say that uh, a dispersion is a physiochemical process, whereas diffusion is entirely a chemical process. Mathematically, diffusion plus is more, sim uh, more simpler than dispersion, and it is uh, defined as mass uh, dispersive mass flow rate equals negative d diff, which is a diff uh, diffusive co uh, constant and has a has a uh, dimension of L square T A as an area of the facing area of the flow or a mass flow and the concentration gra gradient delta C and L. If you are interested in diffusive flux, we divide the mass flow rate with the area and we get the diffusive flux. In so, you can see a similarity between the diffusive flux and dispersive flux uh, in, in, in a sense that you see a constant in both of them and we also see uh, concentration gradient. In groundwater studies, therefore, we combine dispersive flux and diffusive flux. So, when we combine these fluxes and the things that we have learned so far, that is advection, dispersion and diffusion, we obtain a conservative uh, mass flux. This is, this can be represented as Jc, that is C, represents a conservative mass flux equals the dispersive, the first term on the right is this uh, advective mass flux, ma sorry, mass flow rate and plus the dispersive uh, mass flow rate plus the diffusive mass flow rate and here we have combined dispersive and di uh, diffusive using a common, uh, common uh, coefficient which is called hydrodynamic uh, dispersion coefficient. So, now we have learned about conservative transport, it is more important to identify which of these three processes dominates because uh, the, react the, the transport of the particles or the solid will be different when in each of these cases. This can be obtained very elegantly using piclet number which is a number that uh, is obtained by 
uh, from a ratio of transport by advection that is V times D divided by transport by diffusion or dispersion we commonly call it DP. Now, uh, empirical uh, relation of the uh, empirical results of uh, uh, experiments is plotted over here in the screen which specifies the regime in which each of these process advection, diffusion or dispersion dominates. If, and you can see in the figure that for PE or a picklet number less than 0 0.02 diffusion dominates. In this case the, trans the transport will be very slow. In uh, When the picklet number is between 0 0.02 larger than 0 0.02 and smaller than 6 diffusion and dispersion dominates. In this case uh, the rate the moment of mass will relatively be faster than the first case in which the do diffusion dominates and when the picklet number is larger than 6 advection and dispersion dominates and in this case the motion the, um, uh, the transport of the uh, mass will be very fast. So far we have learned about different transport processes and we have learned how to obtain how to find out which transport process dominates over the other one and and this income uh, this uh, learning so far is what we call dealing with a conservative transport model now let's introduce a transport to a reactive transport to our problem so we as we did with a conservative transport we will in here follow uh, the reactive transport processes and here we will deal with only soft sun reaction. The other chemical reactions can also be taking place in the transport, but that is left for you to learn in a in a higher courses or uh, advanced learning. Let let me focus on soft sun here. Soft sun is a is a, is a reaction type in which mass partitions between the liquid phase, as you can see, those uh, uh, small. Uh, uh, particles in the suspended particles and in the solid phase. The solid phase is called adsorbent in this case and mass can be seen attached uh, to the solid phase. So, sorption is basically not a, a reaction in which mass is transformed or the, the chemical uh, property of the mass is uh, in the water is originally changed, but it is partitioned and as it partitions or as it, uh, as it as the mass attaches to the adsorbent the concentration of the particle in the water goes down for, uh, and this is, there is also a process called desorption desorption is opposite of sorption that is when the ma adsorbed mass is given or left to the water in this case the concentration of the mass in the water will rise now, most important factor of using sorption would be to learn to quantify sorption and this is done by using a concept called isotherms. Now, there are many isotherms uh, in uh, literature, but for our uh, module and most important to the groundwater courses are equilibrium isotherm, Langmuir isotherm and friendly isotherms. Here, uh, we will describe these three isotherms and later on we will use these isotherms to, uh, to, our, to set up our transfer problem. Let us start with the simplest isotherm. The simplest isotherm is, uh, is an equilibrium isotherm and it is, uh, it is simple because it is a lean, also called a linear isotherm or a Henry isotherm and it is based on a linear relationship. That is, as can be seen in the equation over here, the mass attached on the surface equals to Kd, a partition coefficient times the concentration in the liquid. So basically, Kd is a factor that distributes the mass between the uh, solid phase and the liquid phase. Now, the important factor would be to find the value Kd, the distribution coefficient. This is also done very elegantly using uh, uh, empirical experiment uh, empirical fitting a set of experiments are done with the different concentrations and equilibrated thus far thereafter a plot between 
the equilibrium concentration and the soft concentration is obtained. The data is then fit linearly and from the fit, the slope, we obtain the KD value. This KD value then can be used very elegantly in a reactive transport models. Okay, this was about equilibrium isotherm. Next, I will deal with a friendly isotherm. Clearly, equilibrium or linear relation do not always hold. So, we have to deal with non-equilibrium, non-linear problems and the friendly isotherm introduces that problem. If you see the expression of friendly isotherm, the only difference that you see is the factor n at c. This n provides a non-linearity to the problem and this establishes the uh, the non-linear problem. So, in this expression C A again is the same as uh, the mass absorbed on the surface and K F is the mass uh, is the partisan friendly distribution coefficient. C is a concentration in water and N is the non-linearity factor. This equation can be uh, it can be linearized by log transformation and this is very simple you put a log in both sides and you will basically get an equation that you can see in the screen. Now as we did with our linear model we can also obtain Kf and N by performing a series of experiments and plotting log data log log data on for Ca uh, against C and fitting it the, the slope the slope of the fit will give us the part di uh, friendly distribution coefficient and as we extend the fit line that we get the intercept and the intercept will give us the nonlinearity factor that is n okay that is a friendly isotherm and friendly isotherm can also be used uh, in setting up a uh, of a reactive transport model but it is important to note here that if we introduce a non-linearity in concentration in the reactive model, then we are our model, our reactive transport model also becomes non-linear and that is a lot of problems solving these kind of problems. Okay, last of our isotherm will be Langmuir isotherm. The Langmuir isotherm also provides the coefficient, the partition coefficient, but in addition to that, it also provides uh, the maximum amount of possible sorption that can take place in particular adsorbent. The expression for the Langmuir isotherm can be seen over here in the slides. Uh, the CAM that you see in the screen is actually the maximum amount of adsorb uh, uh, particles that can be adsorbed and KL is the Langmuir partition coefficient. So, clearly this isotherm looks a more complex than the one that we have dealt so far that is linear and friendly but it is not that difficult to linearize it and the linear form of this model also look is presented over at the bottom of the slide you can and we can uh, perform the same uh, kind of uh, physical experiments and fit uh, make an empirical fit to obtain the value of KL and CAM uh, as you can see in this uh, figure over here, the, uh, the reciprocal of concentrations uh, in liquid and in, uh, in a solid is plotted and the slope, the slope gives us the KL value whereas uh, intercept gives us the uh, maximum, uh, 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 maximum uh, uh, possible option uh, according to Langmuir isotherm. Now that we have already dealt with uh, all different types of uh, isotherms, we have dealt with uh, different processes of tra uh, transport and a subson, we have quantified subson, it is time to put the uh, most useful, develop a most useful factor that can help us to set up a reactive transport problem. In reactive transport problem, we use a term called retardation factor to define the effect of sorption, it actually is some mass being transported is actually being retarded or is moving slowly compared to the other mass and and this 
uh, this slowness is because of of the sorption effect retardation factor is used as i already said uh, is based on uh, equilibrium isotherm or henry isotherm as it is linear isotherm and this doesn't distort our transport problem or this doesn't complexify our transport problem uh, with the non linear term r that is the retardation factor is given by or can be obtained if you see the text uh, if you see the text of this slides you will see the detailed uh, process that uh, r can be obtained and uh, it takes a form as it can be seen in the uh, screen the new term that you see in the screen is uh, rho b which is ma uh, bulk density and uh, the other other terms are a d and any has been previously defined so as you see that uh, using a uh, uh, kd we are able to incorporate uh, a sorption uh, as a retardation factor in the in the transport processes okay let's 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 somehow use this in uh, let's use this and try to develop a transport model okay. next step will be to set up a transport model now we have done the flow model and uh, transport model is again done in the analogous to the uh, flow model that is we have a uh, representative control volume rcv and rcv again is a model aquifer in which we define our flow and in this model that you can see in the screen the mass is flowing in from the y end and flowing out in the uh, from the right end and this is also happening on the uh, x direction and the z direction the the fundamental relation uh, that is used to derive the the advection dispersion reaction model is the mass conservation model which is given as the change of mass in the in the in the in the rcv with respect to time equals the change of mass flow rate in the inflow uh, phase and the outflow phase now to define this system or to define the reactive transport model we'll have to we'll have to uh, uh, find an expression for delta m j in and j out and then put them together to develop our reaction model okay let's do that so let's assume that the volume of our rcb t is delta x times delta y times m m is the thickness of the rcb the dissolved mass that is in water will be v that's the volume of the of the rcb times c of course we have to multiply by any because uh, uh, what uh, it has to be transporting the any is uh, quantifies the porosity the uh, connected porosity okay the salt mass will have an inclusion of bulk density and this is again the volume the entire volume multiplied by the bulk density to the particle times the mass that is absorbed on the solid so here we could introduce we can introduce ca we could introduce the linear model you can see here we are doing uh, in incorporating the uh, reactive transport the sorption linear isotherm by saying that ca equals to kdc now the total mass in the rcv is the mass dissolved mass plus the solved mass that is point number two plus point number three if we add up both and introduce r we'll eventually end up with m equals to any r v c i would like to stress here that if you want to see a very detailed derivation of these models transfer models you should look to the uh, accompanying text uh, of this presentation finally we obtain the change in mass now if you see the mass the only property that can change is the concentration so the change in mass will be equal to the same expression for same quantity any r and p which are fixed quantity but the change in concentration so now we have we have a 
uh, we have a uh, expression for delta m next we obtain an expression for j in that is the uh, mass flow in mass flow rate in and j out that is mass flow uh, out this is very simple uh, from and uh, this can be obtained directly from the from the rcv which is uh, in which j in equals to mass flux times the area the facing area and in this case in the x direction it is m times delta y similarly the mass flux in uh, uh, mass flow rate from the y direction is a mass flow uh, mass flux along from the y direction and the facing area that is m times delta x so i'm i'm only dealing here with the 2d case for the simplicity you can add the third dimension and it doesn't really make any big difference but adds another term to the expression next we deal with j out and again j out is very similar to that uh, j in and it can again already be seen from the uh, from the our rcb model uh, in this case uh, j out is something that is coming in and this portion the partial uh, portion is actually the portion that is uh, being added in a very small distance del uh, delta x so that is j out for uh, x uh, in along the x uh, x direction and then we have the j out along the y direction because we can add the j uh, also add in a z uh, j in a z direction now that we have delta m we have the j in we have j out it is time to put them together that we do it over here you can see that <coughs> If you uh, put this expression together, you will see that uh, you will have delta x, delta, uh, delta y m, that is volume in the both side of the equation and they cancel out. And if you simplify this expression by putting those expressions, you will see that you will get the expression that you see in your screen now. Again, I repeat that if you want to see a detail a line by line, a step by step, uh, derivation you should consult the accompanying text for this presentation okay next step will be to now introduce uh, uh, introduce the relation jx which we have defined earlier as a as a combined uh, form or a or a combined uh, advection flux dispersion flux and diffusive flux and we introduce it over here when you do that when we do that over here we get an uh, equation that you can see over here uh, in terms of alpha l alpha th here alpha th is a dispersivity in the transverse horizontal direction that is uh, 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 that is uh, uh, in a uh, square to say that is in the y direction and you can also definitely have if you are considering this uh, z direction we'll have alpha tv that will be a dispersion in transverse vertical direction also important to note over here is that the advective term is only along x direction we can safely assume that the flow uh, there will be a minimum flow uh, along a y direction and z direction as such the, uh, the advective term can be uh, safely assumed to be only along x direction if you want to have a complete if you really want to have a complete set uh, of advection term then you, you can add up those two terms in that case the model becomes lengthier but not very very complex okay this the equation that you see in your screen is the general uh, two dimensional ADR equation in which we have considered that porosity is constant if you see this equation, it's again second order partial differential equation, linear uh, with the concentration and uh, it's a uh, non-homogeneous equation uh, uh, and it has a time factor and a space factor. Now, the complete formula, uh, formulation of this model requires that we also specify the initial and boundary conditions. The initial conditions, uh, this if uh, initial conditions and boundary condition 
has been earlier defined in module 17. So, uh, I suggest you to check module 17 derivation of flow model and transport model in which you will see that IC or in, uh, initial conditions are required for transient problems whereas for a steady state problems we require boundary conditions and initial condition basically means that we are describing the con uh, concentration at n equals to 0 whereas boundary condition refers to the condition uh, of contaminant or the concentration uh, at different spatial uh, points uh, along the boundary. <coughs> okay, now that we have uh, our very fundamental 2D transport uh, advection dispersion reactive model, we will try to set up a model and try to solve this problem. Let us start with a very simple problem. In this problem, we have uh, a reactive term and we also have a decay term. So, that is why I have to say that uh, concentration is decaying. I have specifically made this example because I wanted to show you that, uh, that uh, different types of chemical reactions can be added to the model just by simply adding the terms as we have done over here for a decay. Of course, this uh, when the decay becomes when the decay coefficient that is lambda becomes zero, we end up with a reactive uh, one d one dimensional reactive transport model uh, with inclusion absorption and no decay. Okay, that's a equation model equation which includes absorption and decay. Of course, we have to define the initial condition and we have it over here and the boundary conditions uh, that is defined over here. The solution, the energetic solution of this problem is given by Kindelbach 1992 as you can see in a very big expression over here. Now, here also we see as we had seen earlier in, uh, in the introdu introductory course in module 17 that we have an error function over here and as I had also error, uh, mentioned earlier that error function are, are integral function and the data of this can be obtained or uh, tabulated data of this can be obtained uh, from the standard mathematical text. Okay. Clearly, this long expression does not tell us anything about uh, the problem and to understand this problem we have to visualize it. So, what we do is we, we simulate this problem, we simulate this uh, solution at different uh, different the value factors and here what we have done here in this example is that we have put uh, it into a different uh, retardation values. So, so as you say when there is retardation is 1 there is no sorption and you can see when there is no sorption the red line that it is in the plot the transport is further whereas when there is a retardation the transport uh, the, the transport of uh, chemical ends the constant uh, mass ends very early and there is uh, no transport after 0 0.5 when there are uh, 0 0.5 uh, 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 length unit uh, when the retardation is 7 whereas when there is no sorption the transport goes up to 2 meters. Likewise, if here in the next case we have made no decay you see in the figure in the left we have a decay factor as well that is affecting the transport but if you see here if there is no decay if the decay is 0, you see that the transport becomes even uh, the transport uh, of the contaminant or the concern uh, uh, mass goes much further and this is something that you can visualize the transport problem. This kind of visualization and many more course, mathematical course can be found in my website uh, that is presented over here. I uh, specifically encourage you to look at this website and try to figure out uh, try to figure out this kind of plots uh, many such plots and in that uh, in the website I have also solved many other problems uh, that can be a very good uh, starting point for your further learning okay now uh, we see we try to solve a more complex problem and that would be a 2d problem a 2d problem with again sorption and decay uh, and this <coughs> problem 
is uh, also similar to the 1D problem, but we have uh, include we include here a uh, second term on the right that is on the dispersion along the y axis. Now, the initial and uh, boundary conditions are uh, similar to what we have specified previously. The solution of this problem is given by again Kindelbach 1992 as as you can see in the screen over here. In this case, we have mass which is being which is the input mass in the system. Rudy problems are are uh, very difficult to visualize because we need to have uh, we don't have a specific uh, we need to define the two spatial spaces and this requires uh, plotting contours, uh, concentration contours and you can see these concentration contours over here, uh, the higher being towards the center and as it spreads out the concentration becomes uh, uh, lesser. So, and if you plot it in the 3D, you will have a, a Gauss type curve over here which with the maximum concentration at the center. Again, these are very complex visualizations and uh, uh, pro solving um, a transfer problem requires uh, high computing, often requires high computing uh, requirements and uh, they are very difficult to understand, uh, but these are the more important problems because uh, these problems actually deals with the quality of water that we require. So uh, again, I repeat that uh, you can check uh, many more simulations that uh, you can see in the screen over here in the website that I have put together. This brings us towards the end of our module 18. In this module, we learned about dispersion, convection, sorption, and diffuse uh, and diffusion. Let me summarize the learnings that we have done in few statements. In this module, we learned about different approaches or a systematic approach to identify different types of flow problems, uh, transfer problems. We learned about identifying and different processes that is active to define transport that is advection, uh, dispersion, diffusion. We learned about the reactive component in the transport uh, problems or in the reactive transport problems and we focused on sorption in this. Moreover, we learned uh, different types of isotherms to identify soft problems. Next, we learned about putting all the transfer processes and the uh, reactive part or the chemical part together and develop a ADR equation that we call as a advection dispersion reaction equation. Finally, we set up a problem, a example problem in 1D and 2D uh, and solve it and finally visualize it. I hope that you have learned sufficient to advance your, uh, uh, your uh, learn, uh, knowledge on this particular course and you are now ready hopefully for the different level. Thank you very much.